So you're big on sedation in your practice. Yes, and I think it would be insensitive not to be because, as you know, one of the limiting factors for patients visiting us is that they don't like us. Um, yeah, so, nobody likes going to the dentist, <laughs> for sure. And uh, as a consequence, you have to have certain uh, um, tools in our armamentarium where we can accommodate them to get over this apprehension. Um, there are four levels of sedation that we render to our patients, one being uh, um, catering to two different group of people, A, the ones that are phobic, and B, the ones that are essentially busy. Anxiolysis, essentially the lowest form, is administering nitrous oxide. So basically we numb the area and we use nitrous oxide for that procedure. That's our first level of sedation that anybody can enjoy, from the kids all the way to the grown-ups. Then there is three other levels. For example, for procedures that patients are afraid of, like root canals, and they don't want to do a crown or an extraction. And then we can do oral sedation, where the patient comes in with another individual that can drive them, and they're in a state where they're much less uh, apprehensive, and uh, also remember much less of the procedure. Okay. Uh, then the next two levels are deep sedation and IV sedation. In the deep sedation scenario, you're still conscious, and we do the IV sedation with you, but you're responsive to what you're saying. So you monitor what, their heart rate, their oxygen, with yes. IV sedation? There's a very thorough process of reviewing their medical history, okay. uh, uh, monitoring them during the procedure, and also certain things that we have to do after the procedure. It's uh, 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 in 12 years uh, um, of being involved with sedation, I have uh, not had any issues thus far. So it's okay. very important, safety is number one when it comes to sedation. And in a deep sedation scenario, where we are uh, on IV, for example, um, we monitor the patients very thoroughly, which creates a safer environment, because we're looking at their blood pressure and their SpO2 and their pulse rate, and making sure that everyone is safe. So it could be argued that it's safer to be under sedation versus not being. And then there are the patients that have a lot of uh, uh, things on their mind and a busy schedule where they can go to the dentist every week. Yeah, because you say you could do like a year worth of dentistry in one visit with sedation. What does that mean? Precisely. They come in, we uh, 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 put them under, all the workup is done before with, uh, with us in terms of their history and background and uh, the markers that we need to get started. When we put them under, we uh, go after the entire treatment plan in one setting. So when they wake up, it's all done. So the other group is a busy patient. Imagine a mother of four that can't go to the office every week. So when they do come and we have them under IV sedation, uh, they are out. And we have the opportunity to do the crowns, the veneers, the root canals, the extractions, the dentures, the implant-supported prosthesis we discussed. All in one? All in one setting. In one visit. Okay. And they wake up on somebody's couch. <laughs> <laughs> like my father, I told you, woke up on my sister's couch. Because he didn't even know that it was done. He forgot that it was done. He, he knew right away. But That's right. So and that's common. Precisely. So, uh, um, and then they see themselves and it changes everything. So for that group, we also have a solution. So the more options, the more solutions, the more people you can help.